All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Corvus mod, which was originally made back in the day by forum user Orion Kerman, but has since been taken over by user Micah. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a Kerbalized interpretation of the Gemini capsule. And I've really been having a lot of fun with this mod, though I must admit, we've had a look at a a fair few mods in the last few months, all of which took a different approach to the Gemini capsule and various associated parts, which is a little bit odd for this channel. We normally look at unique things, but for some reason recently I've been on this weird kick of looking at these sorts of parts, and I love that type of thing, as I always do enjoy seeing how different mod makers take on the same subject. So let's see how this particular one handles it, so into the VAB we go, and since this is meant to be another early game 1.2 five meter size capsule we're gonna grab the mark one command pod for size comparison sake and then of course turn on our lovely filters and have a look at our first part the corvus command pod a kerbalized version of the gemini and i do love it as you can see they definitely went for a more Kerbal stock alike look than a realistic look which you guys know me I always do prefer that sort of style and I do appreciate it it looks very nice of course comparable in size to our mark one but a little bit bigger to you know make room for that extra Kerbal and of course we have the lovely windows here and overall is just a very nice little command pod which does hold two crew members needs at least a minimum of one of course it does have of course the data transmitter built in it is a lifting surface rated at 0.35 it has a reaction wheel the typical crew report a hundred electric charge and finally 10 mono propellant so overall a very nice looking capsule and uh, definitely fully serviceable so let's then head down to the next category which is fuel tanks where we will see our Corvus supply tank which if we do just pop down here at the bottom is a fun little tank that's a little bit interesting as not only does it hold a 200 mono propellant but it's also a generator and will use 1.8 mono propellant to create 0.5 electric charge per second so yeah a nice little generator there but unusual of course as it's not typically something you have inside of a fuel tank but hey let's roll with it the next thing we have is in engines which is the o20 orbital attitude system which if we just place down here on the bottom is a very cool part I do love the design of this thing and it's also quite unique as it's not just an engine producing a maximum of 30 kilonewtons of thrust in a vacuum using mono propellant only at a rate of a three roughly per second but it also is an RCS system and has a built-in RCS thrusters right there right there right there and of course right there so you do get full attitude control with this thing as well as a fun engine to deorbit your craft with and it's actually surprisingly powerful and will deorbit this capsule very very nicely now next up we have is down here in coupling where we do have the corvus decoupler to separate the command pod from the fuel tank or of course our engine and fuel tank from the rest of our rocket and could be used for really any ship as it is in the 1.25 meter size which is always quite nice we then have uh, nothing else until we get down here to thermal where we have the Corvus heat shield which of course is meant to go on the bottom of the capsule there but let's just throw it right uh, there a beautiful heat shield to protect your ship during a re-entry very nice ablator also a lifting surface with again 0.35 similarly to the capsule itself and is also a separator with ejection force of a hundred and it's a uh, very nice very nice though I I always forget to separate it it's just something I don't think about I you know you re-enter and you just land with everything and then the next part we have is down here in utility and of course the final part and is meant to go on top of our capsule here and it is the Corvus nose cone and this is a very beautiful multi-purpose part that is not just a 
interesting nose cone, but also a docking node. Also has the built-in parachute, as well as an RCS thruster system to complement, of course, our attitude control system down here. So that's meant to be at the bottom, that one at the top, so you can actually get some good rotation, etc. And finally has a 30 monopropellant of its own. All very cool and very nice. And what's really fun on it is, see this little red part right here? That is actually where the parachute does come out of, so it's safely in there right now. But then, of course, on re-entry, that will pop off and the parachute will deploy. So it's a very nice multi-purpose part, unlike some of the other sort of Gemini parts packs we've encountered, where the nose cone was made of multiple parts. You'd have a nose cone with the RCS, one with the docking node, and one with the parachute. This one is an all-in-one, which I definitely do enjoy. And that is all of the individual parts for this thing. So let's go and have a quick look at one of these in space, which of course I already did put up earlier. And so let's just head to the tracking station and take a look at our Corvus pod here. And loading, here we are, perfect, a beautiful, lovely Gemini capsule, which if we point this thing more towards the sun for some extra light, there we go. Let's just hold there and take a look at the interior as this does have a full IVA view, which is just gorgeous. We have some great control panels here, good windows to look out of, of to see all of space, and of course, enough room for two and apparently even some snacks above his head there nice i didn't notice that before very cool <laughs> all right let's switch over to the other view there even more snacks above jebediah's head excellent and just overall a very nice cozy little command pod a very very fun indeed and perfect for any early game really i mean it gives you a bit more options than the standard mark one having two personnel up here you could say load it up with just a single pilot and use it as a rescue to pick up someone else and of course with the docking node you can die dock multiples of these together, well, two together, one with the other, and they'll fit together quite nicely to exchange crews, equipment, etc. And overall, just a fun little thing. Let's actually put this thing into retrograde and fire off the uh, decoupler here. I don't know why I put one there, but it has some serious ejection force. Watch this thing. Bam, there it goes, off into space. Oh, lovely. And of course, start up our monopropellant engine there. Always nice. And like I did say, we have the RCS thrusters in here as well, and of course, on the top. So if we just take a look at those, you can see their beautiful thrusting. Very good, very fun. And yeah, that's, um, that's really it for this mod. Very fun, lovely little pack of parts, great for any early game situations, and is just a cool interpretation and version of the Gemini brought into Kerbal Space Program. And so if you would like to take a look at these parts yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as usual. And I would definitely say to give it a go. It is a lovely little set of parts. Very nicely made, very nicely modeled, very nicely textured, very well put together. Overall, just a fun little mod. But uh, yeah, that is going to be it. Oh my, actually quite short for one of our videos. You know what? I actually may let us re-enter the atmosphere. You guys always want to see these things re-enter the atmosphere, and I usually say no because, well, if you've seen one pod enter the atmosphere, well, you've seen them all, frankly. But what the heck, we'll show off the parachute of this thing, and well, we are already well on our way. We've lost all the monopropellant. Be gone, service tank. And of course, fast forward until we hit the atmosphere. There we go, and then of course, 4X. So we can uh, get uh, through this a little bit more quickly and, of course, get through the, the hottest part, which we will make it through quite safely with our lovely heat shield there. Excellent. And nicely through. Very good. All right, and we are just 
falling faster and faster and faster. Probably time to release the parachute. There we go. And as you can see, fairly standard parachute as per usual, though I do like, as I did say, that bit that comes off the side that r launches off the parachute. I don't know why, but it just amuses me that it has that enclosure there. It is a very nice little addition, though if I do turn off the RCS, we do kind of lean a bit to the side as the parachute is coming out from that one particular corner of the pod. But yeah, there we are. We have a, a lovely parachute. Perfect. That will let us slowly drop down into the water for us to actually safely recover our poor, lovely Kerbals. But that is going to be it for this episode then, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed. And of course, you do come back for the next when we'll be looking at, hopefully, what is another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.